I'm Byron Dorgan, and I had the privilege of serving in the U.S. Senate for 18 years, served in the Congress for 30 years, and I came to the Congress from farm country in North Dakota, worked on a lot of issues affecting rural America while there, and uh, that's because I'm from a town of 300 people. We raised horses and cattle, and I graduated in a high school senior class of nine, top five, I think, by the way. But you know, in a rural area, you're, you're never really very far from the top or the bottom, because everybody works together. So I'm visiting with you today because those of us from small towns and family farms now face some new challenges that call on us to work together again. Decades ago, there was a debate about whether people who lived in rural areas, those small towns or on family farms, really needed to get telephone service. The big companies, they said, well, uh, we don't want to spend money building out our expensive systems to bring telephones to family farms and the rural reaches. They said that it won't be profitable and we don't intend to do it. So the federal government did it. And they did it with the help of Telephone's earliest pioneers, the rural telephone companies and the cooperatives. They built those services out to farms and small towns. Good for them. The government decided these were, quote, essential services, unquote. And they, they were going to need financial support to build and maintain. And as a result, the government created something called the Universal Service Fund to support telephone service to these high-cost areas. Now, I know all about high-cost areas because where I grew up, we had a four-digit telephone number. And it was a party line, too. Some of you might remember the kind of line where you can kind of keep track of your neighbor's activities and deny it all along the way. But our telephone service was affordable in our little town, just like in the big cities and suburbs because of the Universal Service Fund. Now, years later, the federal government's thinking about changing it. So here's the deal. The Federal Communications Commission in Washington wants to make changes in the Universal Service Fund and the other financing methods that support rural and high-cost telephone and broadband services. They want to create something called a, quote, Connect America, unquote, fund to get advanced broadband internet services throughout the country. Well, frankly, I think it's a good idea to have a Connect America fund and move broadband services throughout the country. But while they do that, it's critical that they don't destroy the funding that now delivers telecommunication services to the rural areas of our country. The FCC is talking about reforms that use market signals. Well, you know what? That really worries me. The fact is, we know about these market signals and the free market that didn't work to get telephone servers or broadband networks to rural areas. As one old codger said it, if we'd waited for the free market out on the farm, we'd still be watching television by candlelight. Well, listen, the reason I'm talking to you about this FCC plan is because we need to work together to make sure the government gets this right. This proposal could penalize rural broadband providers and put existing, affordable, high-quality broadband service for all of our rural areas in very serious jeopardy. The current high-cost Universal Service Fund has been a great success story for our country. It's enabled our country to stay connected. It's allowed your rural telephone company to deliver on the promise of good, affordable, advanced communication services. Yes, for rural consumers and for family farms and businesses. But this job isn't nearly done. These rural carriers out there have invested billions over the years in advanced networks to meet the needs of customers, and they've done that fully understanding and expecting the government will continue the promise of financial support through this universal service fund that exists. Now, they have to be able to recover their costs. Without it, without that continued support, some companies and some co-ops simply will not survive. That's what's at stake here. Other companies will still need the investment funds to keep building out the same advanced communication services that the people in the big cities have. So, look, I support plans to get broadband internet services built out all across America. But in this new age where distance is supposed to be dead, it's just as critical for me and for you that small towns, rural areas, and family farms have access to the same latest, best, and fastest telecommunication tools to attract the new business and the new economic activity. If they don't, they'll be stuck on the wrong side of the digital divide forever, unable to build their economies, to create jobs, to keep their kids at home, give them opportunity, and build a better economy. So this is really very important. It affects you. It affects your community. Those of us who care about rural America have to take action now to organize, to make sure the government, the FCC, gets it done right. 
contact your rural telecom associations. They are eager and ready to assist you. Find out how you can get involved. Mobilize your employees, your customers, your neighbors. Write letters, raise your voice. Tell the government that they need to support those who live in rural America. In the Old West, when wagon trains moved across the landscape of America, it was always understood the wagons had to move together. They knew you can't move ahead by leaving some behind. That's true with telecommunications as well. No one who lives in rural America deserves to be left behind. So let's push hard now to make sure our government gets this done right. To learn more about Saving Rural Broadband, visit saveruralbroadband.org.